感谢第十四届哈佛中国教育论坛独家战略合作伙伴悟空中文对本届论坛的大力支持。昨天，我们在哈佛大学教育学院的 a s q u e t Hall 举行了盛大的线下开幕式。没有到场的朋友们不要担心，我们的录播会在不久的将来与我们的社交平台分享公布。昨天的三位主旨嘉宾的精彩分享，为我们开拓了中美教育科研展望、中文课堂的科技创新。以及跨国教育经验三大议题的视野。今天的主旨演讲嘉宾将为大家揭晓在教室内外善用高阶思维的奥妙。即将登场的这位嘉宾是北京海家国际双语学校总校长、海家教育研究院院长彭静慈博士。彭博士是一位在教育界服务于四十二年的资深教育家，他是前香港教育学院、香港教育大学。创校副校长，曾任香港大学教育学院高级讲师，以及香港教育署课程发展处总监。彭教授在港大与教院期间，曾培训多位香港的教师及校长，亦曾担任香港中文大学博士考核工作。其次，彭博士专长校长和教师培训、学生高阶思维培养、IB 课程与培训、提升与教学的品质工作。下面让我们有请彭博士。Hi, 大家好。Thank you so much, Angela, for your kind invitation. I feel so privileged and honored to be invited by the Harvard China Education Symposium to share and speak today. So today I'm going to share something related to thinking for developing thinking. Which I found very useful in my 42 years of experience is simple but powerful. So before I do that, may I first turn on my PPT and show you something. Last autumn, during the Mid Autumn Festival. I received a box of mooncake from a friend. We would like to anticipate what could you see when I open this box. This is what the inside looked like. So when I open the box, I have to unfold it, and then I find I'm turning open a hotel model with entrance, dining rooms, and living rooms as well. And if I'm in the open, the living rooms, I can find the mooncakes inside. How do you feel when you see this model or this box of mooncake? At that time, I was very excited. I'm pleasantly surprised by this gift because this is more than a box of mooncake. It's a sign of very clever design. From an education perspective, I find that this person is using what we call level five thinking, synthesis, merging two things together to create something new. And in this case, he's cleverly merging a hotel concept with a mooncake box. So this gives me a very good impression of the hotel, as this is a box of mooncake from the hotel. So we want to develop our thinking in a systematic way. Maybe what we need to know first is how many levels are there in thinking. So once we know how many levels are there, we can develop our thinking or our children's thinking more systematically. How many levels do you think there are in thinking? So, in fact, there have been research and theories on that. And a famous educator called Bloom, Benjamin Bloom, advocated that there should be six levels of thinking, from simple to complicated. So, the simple levels are like what we call recall, which is remembering, comprehension, which is understanding, and application, which means applying. And not on top of that, to be intelligent,、uh, Bloom says there are three more levels: analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. Analysis means the ability to break things down, break complicated things down into the key components, and determine the relations among them. For example, after reading this Harry Potter book, if we ask Trin the question, "What are the key characters in this book?" And what are the relations among them? Then, still, to analyze 
extract the important ingredients and conceptualize all this into certain key components, in this case, key characters. Or if you ask students, what are the differences between these two books, Harry Potter and uh, The Man and the Sea? Then when students have to find out the differences and similarities, students have to break each down first into the key components before they can compare. The next level, which is a bit higher, is the opposite. Instead of breaking down, it is the ability to mix things together into meaningful things. So integrate learning from different situations to form a new concept or picture, or reorganize elements into a new pattern or structure as shown in this diagram. So the key thing is something meaningful and new. So examples are like, for example, the bird's nest in Beijing is a very good example. Not only when we design a stadium, we design from scratch. But this design is very clever. He used level five thinking and merged the concept of a bird's nest with that of a stadium. Right? Something very innovative. That job. Well, after reading two books, Journey to the West, Lord of the Rings, if we ask students to rewrite the ending of Journey to the West using Law of the Rings, then students will have to mix the two together in a meaningful way, a new story. The mooncake box with a hotel model is a good example. And recently I found this kind of green patches that has integrated alkaline batteries with a USB plug. I found this very innovative because with these new batteries, we don't need the battery chargers anymore. So anywhere we can plug this into a computer and charge our battery easily. Now, apart from breaking down, integrating to form new things, the highest level, which is most complicated, according to Bloom, is level six thinking, which he call evaluation. And this is the ability to make judgments using selected criteria. And this is very important for, for helping us to judge whether things are right or wrong, good or bad, better or worse, etc. And the key here is the ability to choose appropriate criteria for making ju good judgments. If we use inappropriate criteria, our decisions will be wrong. So for example, if we ask people to to design which is the best design among the five greenhouse designs here. This is a level six, six question. So people have to first decide on the criteria, whether it's based on whether the designs are pretty or whether the designs are cost effective or whether the designs are best in enhancing photosynthetic rate. So if we choose the right criteria, we can have a very effective greenhouse. But if we choose inappropriate criteria, we may end up with a beautiful, greenhouse that may not work very well. So these are other questions. Like if we ask people, which is more successful, insect or man, particularly why? Which book is better? Why? What is the best movie you have seen? Why? There's no standard answer. The answer depends on what criteria you choose. For example, if you choose a normal criteria, of doing things in a more complicated way, then certainly human will be more successful. But we define success as the ability to survive in any parts of the earth. Maybe insects can survive in many more places than human. Then insects can be considered as more successful from this perspective. So Bloom's levels of thinking, in summary, are remembering, understanding, and applying and then analyzing, synthesizing, and evaluating. So by using the levels, we can ensure that we don't simply remember, understand, and apply, but always, we can always see the key points of things, create new insights, and have good judgments. So as you can see from this summary here, if we use high order thinking in our life, then instead of being a passive person who always learn from others and and remember things from others, you can always grab key points, always create new insights, always have good judgment, become a very active person who is able to have good insights and decisions.
So today, the main focus is talking about how to apply this to enhance our daily life. If we have children, then certainly having this high order thinking framework can help to develop the intelligence of our children in a more systematic way and help them develop better habits for thinking and studies. And for ourselves, using this as a daily habit, as a framework for looking at things, then we can always go beyond you know, everyday life. Let me give you some examples. For example, instead of asking any random questions, like after dream reading two books, instead of adding, asking, hey, do you understand the books, so on, if we ask these three types of questions systematically, hey, what are the key differences between these two books? Or create a new story with ideas beyond these two books. So students have to add their own ideas into the idea of these books to create something. Mm -hmm. And ask it, which of these books would you recommend to your classmates and why? Then helping students to always get the key points, merge things together to create something new. And particularly, helping them to have clear criteria for making good judgments. So for example, if they want to encourage classmates to be more rigorous than old men and the sea, if we ask them to always consider impact of us on the society, that might be recommend for us come. Apart from asking questions to our children, we can always emphasize on certain things to develop good habits in them so that they're always thinking about four, five, six levels all the time. For example, encourage our children ourselves not to simply rely on one book. On any topic like photosynthesis, read two books. Look at the different approaches that the authors are talking about it. Extract the key points for analysis and then synthesize our own knowledge. Actively create our own knowledge rather than passively remembering other people's knowledge. Or always remember to analyze, synthesize and evaluate in whatever they're learning. For example, in bilingual schools, when children are learning from Chinese teacher, mathematics, and learning from English teachers, mathematics, the approaches can be different. Then they can analyze what are the key features of Chinese teaching, teachers teaching math or English teaching, teaching math. What are the differences between Chinese math and English math? And analyze what are the merits and weaknesses of either types of math. Like Chinese math is very good, very solid in foundation, very fast. And international maths could be very good in reasoning, in application, and so on. And always, apart from analyzing, judging, always create the strong better versions, like creating the own maths to learn maths better. Along the same principle, we can always encourage children to learn not just by themselves, but work with their classmates. On the same topic, listen to different learning, different opinions from others. If they find, they find opinion and learning better than themselves after judging, synthesize, synthesize the better ideas into their own. So they're ongoingly fine-tuning and improving the concept to learn better and better. Now for us adults, having a habit of using high-order thinking could be very useful. For example, when we encounter a friend who is not too happy, then we can amalgamate from our own experience, like indicating, say, I'm happy with happy, and create a sentence like, I'm happy times will make happy times happier, to have some insightful sharing with our friends to encourage them. Or like in Biba, when we're organizing parents' workshop to provide learning experiences for our parents, instead of giving talks, we use what we call workshops. After brief introductions, we set parents in the groups, let them discuss, how to integrate the new learning with the home experiences so that they can apply all this better and listen to the good ideas of the group mates so that they can always enhance and fine tune through analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. I'm so touched to hear from one group that, hey, after learning about high order thinking, next time when I bring my dream overseas or summer trips, I'm going to ask level four, five, six questions to them all the time. So I spoke. active individuals with more insights and good judgment, etc. And even today, when we attend this Harvard China Education Symposium, after listening to the different speakers, like after learning about high order thinking today and listening to about AI later, you can use high order thinking to analyze and find the merits of AI 
and use a good aspects of AI to integrate in habits to improve our, our daily life using AI. So in sum, if we can develop a habit of using high order thinking, always analyze, always create new things, new insights, and always select appropriate criteria to make good judgments, then we can become a very active person with good insights and judgments. So hope this sharing is useful. So I hope you, you may bring Broom into your, your, your everyday life context and use the Broom's levels to prove, support your children in the learning and support yourself to be persons, become more active with uh, personal insights and good judgments. Thank you so much. I hope you'll find this sharing useful. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, thank you so much for sharing, Dr. Peng. Um, if you, you may stop screen sharing. Um, okay. And um, we got a lot of questions from our audience who are live streaming okay. from all over the world. Um, so I think we might have time for one question. So okay. the one that's coming to me is, um, what are some future trends in high order thinking? And how can educators adapt to these changes, you know, with the advancement of technology, et cetera? Hmm. Hmm. I find high order thinking a very useful framework for us to think through things thoroughly. So not simply understand, apply, and use them, but become persons who have individual analysis, synthesis, and judgment abilities. So whatever we see, we can always come up with new ideas, always come up with ideas for improvements. For example, now GPT, chat GPT is so popular. I've been using high order thinking to analyze it. And I find that chat GPT is very good in providing information. But sometimes if you ask them the same question a few times, they come up with different answers. All of them are good answers. So actually using high order thinking, I now know what is chat GPT. And then I can use this as a basis for enhancing our work. For example, if you're going to create a poem, rather than asking them to write a poem for us about Gu, Gu Xiang, or, or, or the olden days, <laughs> ask them GPT several times. And then based on what they provide, extract all the good things from them using level six, and then compose our best poem from that. <laughs> so using high order thinking, we can always use whatever we have for advancement. And when people ask you, hey, do you have any views on chat GPT? They always say, yes, if we use it actively, not passively, it's going to enhance our work. <laughs> we become better through that IT. I hope this could be useful. So using level four, five, six all the time could be very useful as a habit. Brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing your insight. And we, for everyone listening in, we will definitely share the Bloom's taxonomy with all of you so we can all be familiar with the level four, five, six, so the high order thinking. Um, and ChatGPT is definitely a heated topic, and we will definitely discuss it more um, in our um, future panels as well. So mm, yeah. um, thank you so much for sharing, Dr. Peng. Welcome. Yes, so maybe today talk. everybody can make this a level four, five, six Harvard China Education Symposium and create new insights for all the excellent preparation and share. Yeah.